Hi there guys, this is Jeder for Intagna. Uh, recently I did some experimenting uh, with the Subsolver inside of Houdini and came up with the animation you're just uh, watching in the, in the viewport and I uh, wanted to show you guys how to achieve this effect so let's dive right into it and in order to understand it a little bit better probably it's a good idea to uh, start from scratch so um, let's put down a grid grid sub and give it 4x4 four four, uh, rows and columns and in order to um, have some interesting polygonal uh, layout or shape to start with I'm just using the poly reduce here um, and after that we can use the sub solver uh, where all the magic will happen and before I dive into the uh, sub solver uh, you should uh, pin down the, the viewport so we can actually see the effect uh, of the solver and um, let's take a resample sub uh, which can be used uh, with uh, curves but at the same time also uh, with um, polygons as you can see here so if I change the segment length uh, you see my uh, polygons uh, are uh, resampled but we will use the maximum segments uh, parameter so when let's set it down to six so now all my polygons are resampled uh, or should be resampled down to uh, six segments and there is one important uh, option which has to be changed and that's uh, treat polygons as subdivision curves because um, this will give a much nicer um, shape uh, for each polygon so uh, that should do it for the resample node and now let's take a, a relax node and I think um, so we don't need the p scale attribute um, and the point radius scale can be put down to 0, 0, 001 and the iteration also to one that should be totally sufficient and um, now we need a sort node so uh, what the sort node will do in this context is that it will uh, that I will um, sort the primitives or the polygons uh, in a random fashion so this is uh, like the way they were indexed before and now if I set it to random you can see that uh, the indexing change uh, indexing changes so now I will take a group, a group node and group a couple of those um, polygons and let's say take all the polygons between 0 and 5. So now I have a primitive group here which consists of 6 primitives of polygons and uh, the group name is group 1 which we will use in the subdivide sub. So if we go here, uh, as you can see it immediately subdivides all of the polygons but we just want to subdivide six of them and this uh and that's uh all we have to do uh for for the, for the solver sub so if we play this now you can see oh let me turn off the primitive number you can see that uh our polygons are having this uh interesting replicating effect so um what i also did in my setup is that i animated the point radius scale up here so i think I, it began with uh, 0 0.01 set a keyframe and go up to 0 0.06 and commit the change so now uh, the distances from the polygons to each other should uh, grow over time let's see if that that's the case yeah as you can see the ones which we're replicating first uh, have the smaller distance and the ones later have this bigger distance from each other and now we can go up and uh, do uh, the colorizing which is also rather easy so what i did there is i took the uh, measure sop and i'm measuring the perimeters of those polygons and in order to use that inside a column node we have to get the perimeter attribute from the uh, primitive level to the point uh, level so let's use the attribute promote here and set it to original class the primitive to new class the point we want to um, promote the perimeter attribute so now it's on the uh, point level so all we now need is uh, a color node and set the color type to ramp from attribute and use the perimeter and now we can just change the color so I think it will be easier to see maybe change the range also a little bit so I think that should do the job we make the viewport bigger so as you can now see um, 
that's uh, like the, the, the basic setup uh, of this uh, self-replicating uh, effect. And of course, uh, you're not bound to uh, do this on a grid. You can do this also on a different geometry, but um, and it and it's uh, not getting any more complicated. So let me take a look. So yeah, here I have a setup where I'm using um, the pig. Um, and if we activate the sub solver and go inside, you can see that the basic setup um, is the same. And there's small exception, uh, which makes, uh, makes the, the polygons adhere to the surface of the pig. And that's uh, here, uh, the second input of the uh, sub, uh, resample, uh, sorry, relax uh, node. So uh, what I'm, the second input takes a surface uh, where the polygons can be adhered to. So um, I did that. I took the, uh, the pick, of course. And now if you go down here and um, let this one play, you can see that uh, the replicating effect stays put or sticks to the surface of the pick. So um, that's like uh, some static. Uh, 3D geometry, uh, you can also um, take this one onto uh, this effect onto uh, animated geometry. Here I have a uh, head moving. So what I did there is I just used uh, the point deform uh, node in order to uh, get the animation stick to the um, uh, moving or animated uh, geometry. So let's see if how that looks exactly. So, um, yeah, that was the self-replicating uh, polygarden effect. Um, have fun with it. See ya. Bye.